Hey folks, um, so I thought we'd have a look just at earthquakes today. Um, I've got a little sneaky feeling this is going to come up in this is exam, I'm not sure why, but I get a hunch. I've got a feeling this one may come up, uh, didn't come up too often in recent years, so who knows. Um, start by drawing a podium, anyway, so we've got first, second and third. Now this video is going to walk you through methods of reducing the damage from earthquakes. So this is very often one of those longer mark questions, either a six or very, very possibly a nine. Okay, and it is the three P's. When you see that reducing the damage, you need to think three P's, protection, planning and prediction. Okay, and we're going to do it in that order. Okay, so if you write um, protection, that is our number one for, by the way, you won't lose marks if you put a different one as, as first, as long as you justify it. But for this video, we're gonna do protection as number one, because prediction is almost impossible with earthquakes. Uh, planning can be second, and then third, as I just mentioned, um, prediction. And that's because Earthquakes are super hard to predict. Okay, now I could just leave it like that, but shall we get some, let's get some extra in there, why not? Um, so let's start in third place, so prediction. Okay, the reason for that, okay, accurate predictions for earthquakes are impossible. Accurate predictions are literally impossible. If they, if it was possible to predict them, honestly, so many lives would be saved and it would just, it, you'd, you'd be famous and rich, but nobody has come up with a way of predicting them. However, however, um, what they can do is they can look at past um, uh, earthquakes, and said eruptions, past earthquakes to identify locations that are more at risk. Okay, so however, historical records uh, can identify kind of risk areas. Now, this is particularly true of those kind of plate boundaries, the conservative plate boundaries, where there's a fault line. So if you draw kind of a boundary like this, and you've got one plate going this way and another plate going that way but kind of faster they can like snag and get caught and then you'll have an earthquake now if there was an earthquake here okay let's say there's an earthquake there 100 years ago and then there was another earthquake here okay um let's say you know recent they can kind of estimate the gap. Do you see like the gap between the two? And then they could say, this will be the location of the next one. And they can roughly say when it will be. So they can say, you know, in about 100 years time from now, we expect the next one to be there. Now that's a pretty um, generic way of doing it, but it's the best we have. Okay, we, we just don't have anything better. Um, so that's prediction. It's the worst method to protect people, but it's worth mentioning, okay, because it's one of our three Ps. Best is protection, and then we've got planning. So the one with protection, actually, I'll come back to that later. Let's do planning. Planning is really important. So for planning, you can have something called a shake map. Okay, a shake map. And it's normally, normally colour coded, okay? And it will it's a bit like, you know, looking at the past quakes, it will tell you which areas are more likely to shake worse than other areas. And then they can think about where to put certain buildings. So shake maps, um, a shake map is used to identify, identify, areas um, 
to locate what we call um, kind of high value buildings. So hospitals, yeah, things, things like that, you know, like um, things that are going to save people's lives. Okay, hospitals um, and uh, yeah, other, other important buildings, government buildings. Okay, um, the next thing is an emergency kit. Now, I know myself, if I lived in an area that had earthquakes, I would have this kit made up. It would be in a bag, in my car, probably in the car, yeah, so it was kind of with me, um, and it would be super useful. I would have things like um, a torch, okay, because electricity goes down. I would have water. I might have some medicine if I wanted, you know, certain medicines, like even paracetamol. Um, I might even have some food, you know, some protein bars. And that, and a blanket, let's put a blanket in there as well. Basically, in that kit, I would have what I needed in the event of an emergency. And that's a planned thing, I've planned it, I've packed it, I've got it, it's ready to go. The other thing that you can do with planning is you can have an evacuation plan. Um, now, evacuation is when you leave a place and you're going, you know, to, to another place. Now, this plan would have been written up ahead of time, shared with the family, so that when, if all mobile signals go down and you're all separated, some of you are at school, some of you are at home, you all know where your safe place is gonna be. Maybe it's Auntie Jones and it's, you know, 10 miles away or five miles away, wherever it is, you're gonna get there. You're gonna meet each other. So you have your evacuation plan, okay? And this planning, these shake maps, all these things are super useful, um, but they're not the best. Okay, because earthquakes happen really quickly. So the very, very best thing, okay, is protection. Now, to show this, I need to show you what to do with a building. It's not earthquakes that kill people, as was famously said, um, buildings do. So, draw a building, like so. Give it a roof, give it a side, there we go. Now, imagine, this is a high-rise block, okay? And this is where you live. That's the door down there. Um, it could even be a smaller house, but just for example, we use this. Then draw these cross structures. So cross, now you wouldn't see this on the outside because it's on the inside, but these cross structures are super useful, okay? They're in the building. Um, they allow the building to twist. Okay, when an earthquake happens, the ground goes left to right and, side, and forward and back. So it's moving in lots of different directions. And these are called cross structures. Okay, now these cross structures allow the building to move, okay, and twist. If you look at videos of like Tokyo, for example, during an earthquake, Buildings are swaying and moving, they're not breaking. It's the buildings that can't move, that are rigid, that break. Um, the other thing, if we just draw a window, okay, or a couple of windows, um, something that you can have, it's quite clever, it's just, um, you can get shatterproof glass, you can get automatic shutters. Let's just write those there, so. Shatterproof glass stops glass um, hurting people and automatic shutters. Okay, and that will stop glass falling onto the street, onto people, or in the building. Okay, could get really hurt by that. Now, the last thing this will be easy for anyone who rides a bike, which hopefully is all of you. Um, I'm gonna draw a line to it, where am I gonna put it down here? Okay, the building itself is sitting on suspension, hydraulic suspension, okay? It's called shock absorbers. So if we write the word shock absorbers. Now the idea 
is very simple. If you've ridden a mountain bike with suspension, okay, you'll know if you go over a bump, the suspension takes that bump and you don't feel it too much in your body. Whereas if you've ridden a bike without suspension, you'll know you feel every single jarring bump. So shock absorbers, okay, they use hydraulic fluid, which is the same as good mountain bikes. Hydraulic fluid, okay, just like suspension on a bike, to absorb the energy of the seismic waves. Okay, so there you go, there's your kind of top three. Um, there's plenty in there for you to discuss, in fact you wouldn't even need, in a, in a, even in a nine marker you could pick one from each. So maybe, you know, a couple of points from this, um, one over here on either shake map, map emergency kit or evacuation plan. You don't need them all. Okay, there's more than enough on there. Hope that's helpful.